Welcome back to the workshop. Today we're doing nine essential tips for carving bows. Let's get straight to it. Number one, get other carving hobbies. I love spoon making because this teaches you to make facets, tapers, and hollow sections. Wonderful skills to have for bow making. Making spoons has taught me a lot about using gouges, chisels, different uses for draw knives that I never would have thought of if I was only making bows. If you only learn carving through bows, it's gonna give you a very limited view of how to use your tools. Tip number two, facet carving. This is the idea that if you have a carving task, you split it up into facets. In the case of bows, it's easiest to first remove wood from one angle than the other, leaving a nice ridge down the middle that's easy to remove. Always carving on ridges is much easier than trying to carve flat areas. If you look at your work closely, your tool marks will typically leave little ridges and valleys. If you try to aim for the valleys, you may not be able to hit them because your tools will bottom out on the ridges and you won't remove the wood you're looking for. If you try to hit the ridges, then you'll have a much easier time. And incidentally, if you get used to doing this, that leaves a really nice tool pattern. Tip number three, follow the grain. You hear it all the time, but what does it mean? Grain has so many meanings that it means nothing. You can be talking about the fibers, the figure, there are about 20 words that collectively mean grain. So it's not a very helpful term. When bowyers talk about following the grain, they mean follow the fibers, like it's a river. When the river swirls, you gotta follow the swirls. If you just cut across them indiscriminately, you're violating the grain and you're setting your bow up to break. By the way, that's why it's so important to have a good wood selection in a board bow. Since the board is sawn straight, you need fibers that are straight, otherwise they might have been violated, leaving you with runoff. Tip number four is highly related to three, and that's a way to follow the grain, controlled splitting. There are other ways to follow the grain, like abrasion and cutting. Now when you split, the splitting does the following the fibers for you, because fibers would rather separate than shear. And while we're on the topic of controlled splitting, I should mention that that's my preferred method of dealing with knots. Knots are really tedious to deal with, but if you use controlled splitting, you can follow them very quickly for very little effort. Usually I use this dull screwdriver with a big mallet. Now controlled splitting has its problems too, and that's when it goes uncontrolled, usually because you bite off more than you can chew. Tip number five, how to deal with tear out and in particular that situation where your knife gets stuck. Let's see if we can induce a little bit of tear out. First, I'll show you some clean cutting. No problem there, this hash cuts pretty well. Let's see if we can induce some tear out. There we go. Now the first thing you wanna do is resist the temptation to finish the cut. That would be controlled splitting. If you're confident in where the cut will go, that's perfectly fine. You can use controlled splitting. In this case, I'm not sure if I want to do that. So you need to back out of the cut and resume the cutting downstream of where the tear out happened. There we go. Now we got rid of that piece without any tear out. Here's another example. This one really shows some of the difficulty of using boards with draw knives. You can see that on this side, the draw knife cuts really cleanly and I'm carving with the grain. But as soon as I switch to the other side, every cut I make seems to go against the grain. Rather than allowing the tear out to happen, once the draw knife gets stuck, I back out of each little cut. Now that's not always enough on its own, so sometimes it can help to change the direction of the draw knife entirely. By the way, this is also the same way that I would deal with chatter when using a spoke shave or a card scraper. Tip number six for keeping your knife sharp and avoiding chips in the blade. Try not to bang your knife against the cut. If you're having trouble, try to split it up into smaller increments. So here we have a little knot. You could keep banging 
gonna chip up your draw knife and you're not really gonna get anywhere. So find the biggest cut that's still easy and the draw knife can manage and do the whole thing in smaller increments. Number seven, use the right tool for the job. You want a tool that matches the magnitude of the cut you're making. So when you're doing a rough out, it's really nice to have a heavy tool, like a hatchet or this huge timber framing draw knife. For early tillering and general carving, I like an average size draw knife. For fine tillering, I really like a card scraper. Number eight, that's the most important tool in bow making, just my opinion. It's the card scraper. It's just a rectangle of carbon steel, nothing special. The special part is the burr that you form on it. By taking another piece of carbon steel, this is called a burnishing tool, but you could also use the base of a chisel or any other piece of hard steel, and you bear down on your card scraper until the edge starts to flare. If you continue this for long enough, you get a sharp burr that you can use to carve very fine, delicious shavings. For a detailed guide on how to get a really nice burr on your own card scraper, down in the description of this video, I linked a few videos that will really help you out. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about toolkits and what tools I think you should get if you're just starting out. I'll also mention some of the details about my own tools. Now I've been using this Wood River spoke shave for my microphone because I got a little fed up with it on my shirt. So now I'm going to take this off on camera mic, but I'm going to have to bring you a lot closer so you can hear. Hopefully the sound is still all right like that. So first tool I think you should get is a spoke shave. As I said, this is the Wood River Low Angle Spoke Shave. Great tool, but it's a little bit pricey for when you're starting out. I think a more affordable option is something like this Grizzly Spoke Shave. It's a high angle style spoke shave. And this ran about 30 bucks. It's not a super expensive tool, but I've gotten a lot of life out of it. I still use it once in a while. Next, I think a half round file is invaluable. This is a machinist type half round file from a cheap set from Nicholson. I've had this for years and years and years, even before I was making bows. I still use it, it still works just fine. You can use this to remove tool marks for very fine tillering, carving knock overlays, absolutely essential to have. Now a file doesn't remove that much wood, so it's also nice to have a bulk removal file, like a rasp. This is a Shinto rasp assembled from hacksaw blades. Now, these are really great at not clogging, and they're also easy to unclog if they do get clogged. Awesome tool. Good alternative is something like a farrier's rasp. These are a bit more aggressive. I think they can remove a little bit more wood, but as you see, they also clog a bit more. And of course, the invaluable card scraper. Hard to go without one. So in summary, I think you need a card scraper. You want a file some kind of spoke shave, and some kind of rasp. Now, optional addition is you could use a little knock file. This is a chainsaw file to carve your knocks. But if you don't have one, you can also use the edge of a half round file to carve knocks. Works just fine. Now, those recommendations are particular for board bows. Not everyone starts with board bows, and if you'll be using split stave or natural stave bows, it's helpful to have a heavy removal tool, like a draw knife or a hatchet. As you know, I like a very heavy draw knife for rough outs, and I like a sharp and curved draw knife for all around work. The reason I have so many draw knives is that as I was saying, I like to use the right magnitude of tool for the cut I'm making. If I only use each draw knife for the job it's meant to do, I'll tend to wear them out less and the blades last a lot longer. Draw knife blades last for a lifetime anyway, so that's not so much the issue. It's more that I hate chipping the blades and having to resharpen them. You really don't have to have a shaving sharp blade on your draw knife, and it's kind of pointless to do this. That sort of blade won't last very long and is very likely to chip up. I think it's more important to have a smooth blade that will leave a clean cut. All right, let's get on to the last tip. And as I do that, I'll play out the video with some pictures of my latest bow, a lightweight deflex recurve from a hickory sapling. Before I move on to the last tip, if you have any comments or corrections, if there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, or if you'd like any help with your own builds, just find me in the comments. 
If you're looking for a greater bowmaking community, check out Reddit's r slash bowyer, the website Primitive Archer, or the several bowmaking groups on Facebook. Tip number nine. When you're done watching this video, head over to the description section. In there I put a big list full of links to other bowmaking channels on YouTube. Head over to these channels, and if you like a video, hit the like button, and if you want to see more content from that channel, hit the bell icon for notifications. If you do this, you're helping to keep the craft alive and healthy, and you'll also see a lot less drama on your YouTube, and instead, much more high quality bow making. I've done this, and it's really improved my YouTube experience. Alright folks, that's all for today. I know the last one wasn't a real carving tip, but it has actually helped with my carving. I'll see you next time, and until then, may your arrows fly true.